From the School of Journalism and Mass Communication at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, this is Carolina Week. Good evening, I'm Tim Nelson. Thanks for joining us for the September 19th edition of Carolina Week. And I'm Brigitte Mack. We're proud to be bringing you coverage of Carolina news and events. Americans across the country are praying for those affected by Tuesday's terrorist attacks. Members of the Chapel Hill community are also hoping for word about UNC alumni who were in the area at the time of the horrific events. Carolina Week's Nicole Prusik reports. The people inside the World Trade Center and Pentagon were from all across the country, including Chapel Hill. UNC has a large number of alumni who live and work in the area. The General Alumni Association website allows people to search for fellow Tar Heels in a database of more than 200,000 alumni. People have been able to connect with one another and uh, reassure each other. An important connection in a time of national tragedy. The exact number of Carolina alumni missing is still unknown, but the number of people from our university in possible danger is substantial. There are about 7,200 alumni from UNC Chapel Hill in the New York metropolitan area, 100 of them with business addresses in the World Trade Towers or close vicinity. In the Washington area, there are 8,200 Carolina graduates, with 40 listing a Pentagon business address. Of all the schools at Carolina, the business school has the largest number of alumni who had reason to be near the World Trade Towers. Catherine Graves here, a UNC business graduate, has emailed the university concerned about her fellow classmates. Like many people, Dean Robert Sullivan of the business school is also waiting for information about Keenan alumni. We had some in the building, so they were in the midst of this disaster and were reporting this. We have a number that have actually submitted uh, little narratives about the experience that they had. Like the General Alumni Association, the business school is also using the internet to let the UNC community find people and make sure they're alive and safe. The website has a self-reported list of people who made it through the tragedy. In Chapel Hill, I'm Nicole Brusick, Carolina Week. Currently, there are two confirmed UNC Chapel Hill alumni deaths. Both were aboard American Airlines flights. One was in the plane that crashed into the World Trade Center, while the other was in the plane that crashed into the Pentagon. The closest many Americans could get to Tuesday's terrorist attack was their television sets. But retired Chapel Hill professor James Smith and his wife, Linda Topp, woke up Tuesday morning at a hotel located right between the two doomed towers. Fire department people were there saying, do not look behind you, do not look up, move as quickly as possible. We saw somebody fall out of the North Tower. A plane went into the building. That can't happen. That can't possibly happen. What I just saw can't possibly happen. People were running from two different directions and screaming. We look up and here's this, this roiling cloud of smoke and particulate matter pouring down two streets right at us. And we're like, oh, it's the end of the world. What are we going to do now? You could see the sky turning black, stuff, uh, just stuff in the air swirling by. People coming in the outer doors, coughing, choking. We were in a movie that we wouldn't even go watch. This is, in fact, terrorism, and now you know that you don't know anything. And we thank God we survived, that these people will not, uh, will not stomp out the American spirit. They will not uh, make us go hunker down and, and live lives of fear. The couple returned safely to their Chapel Hill home Thursday, but some of their belongings are still buried in the rubble. UNC Chapel Hill young Democrats are showing their concern for our nation's future by meeting to discuss the effects of last week's attacks. Tuesday night, the group invited U.S. Representative David Price to an open discussion in Carroll Hall concerning the events of September 11th. Students and community members lined up to ask questions about United States foreign policy and comment about the government's response to Tuesday's tragedy. Price says Congress agrees military force is necessary. I hardly have to state it. This is obviously uh, so far beyond the pale that uh, I think there's widespread agreements that we must, uh, we must root it out. We cannot allow our country and our people and our values to be threatened. Congressman Price represents the triangle, including the Carolina campus. He frequently speaks at the Young Democrats meetings. 
While the number of dead rises in New York and Washington, D.C., the spirit of patriotism continues to grow in the hearts of the Americans, including in the streets of Chapel Hill. Flags fly high over Franklin Street while people proudly display the red, white, and blue all across town. But with the sudden surge of patriotism, stores are selling out of the Stars and Stripes. Stores across town are running out or are running low. Car drug on Franklin Street is already waiting on its next order of flags. Other store managers in the area say they've been out of flags for days. President Bush says terrorist Osama bin Laden is the prime suspect in last week's terrorist attacks. Bin Laden is an Islamic extremist who's been connected to other terrorist attacks worldwide. Carolina Week's Regina Willis tells us Arab and Muslim Americans on campus are worried that they'll be punished for the acts of a... The first stage of grief is denial. The second, anger. This random person sent me a message and was like, all Arabs need to be killed, whatever, you are to blame what happened. Our mosque right here in Raleigh received well over 14 um, bomb threats. Across the country, there are reports of people blaming Muslims and Arab Americans for last Tuesday's terrorist attacks. Although no violence has been reported here, there is tension at UNC Chapel Hill. The same day that students united at Polk Place to pray for peace, Anti-Islamic flyers like this were posted here at Venable Hall and at other locations across campus. The flyers were written by a group called the Informed Christian News Service. The flyer quotes the Islamic holy book, the Quran. Concerning religious toleration, fight and slay the infidels wherever ye find them. Arab club president Hani al-Khaldi says the flyers are misleading. The word Islam is, it means peace. And, and what happened cannot be justified by Islam. Islam does not condone the killing of innocent people. Muslim student Fazia Tariq says terrorists are giving Islam a bad name. Terrorists don't have religions. Um, and I don't think it's fair that an entire faith should be punished for the actions of one who is claiming to be of them. Jamila Boutrid is proud of her faith, but wants people to remember that Muslims and Arab Americans are citizens of the U.S. I knew people that worked in the World Trade Center. I know people who have family that work, worked in the World Trade Centers, and I'm grieving as much as like any other American. Muslim students hope that by educating people about their religion, they can overcome their anger and begin to heal. In Chapel Hill, I'm Regina Willis, Carolina Week. Most of the Muslim students we spoke with said overall people on campus have been very supportive. In addition to educational forums on campus, they say they've received many encouraging emails and phone calls. Well, they're hundreds of miles away from the wreckage of the World Trade Center collapse. But Chapel Hill firefighters are still offering a helping hand to those in New York City, all the way from Franklin Street. Scientists have proven that his brain will develop better when you read, sing, and talk to him in full sentences from the day he is born. What do you want, honey? Let him bring out the baby in you, but you need to bring out his mind. An early start. Now that's smart. A freshman's first day in Phillips Hall is a humbling experience. You need to get to the third floor, but not every stairwell leads you there. Just as in life, take the wrong way up and you won't get anywhere. None of the corridors make sense. It's like being in a huge maze at 7.57 while you're looking for your 8 o'clock class. No one knows the real Carolina like a student. Carolina Week, the student news show. The Carolina community continues to remember those who lost their lives in last week's tragedy. Carolina Week's Craig Ledford tells us we can express what we feel through art. The students, faculty, and passers-by stopped to listen and watch at Pope Place Wednesday morning on the campus of UNC Chapel Hill. They were all listening to the sounds of hope. Hope for healing and peace, and to honor those who lost their lives. Artists were invited to share their feelings through song and dance, poetry readings, and dramatic performance. Arts Carolina sponsored the event. 
I knew that the arts would be a way for this community to be together, to come together, uh, to provide a focal point for the expression of the feelings that we can hardly even utter at this point. The event was set up to let people say whatever they wanted to help them deal with what has turned out to be a very confusing time. People were invited to write letters to the New York firefighters and to volunteer their time, help raise money, or give blood. Even though that, you know, we're hundreds of miles apart, that, you know, I, in a sense, feel what they're going through. This was, this was something that I could do, lend my voice to, to hopefully let other people lend theirs to start talking about what people are going through. Experts say expressing feelings is the first step toward dealing with those feelings. In Chapel Hill, I'm Craig Ledford, Carolina Week. The arts tribute will be on display for the next two weeks. The recovery mission continues for the New York City Fire Department. And even though they are hundreds of miles away, Chapel Hill's firefighters are doing what they can to help. and is joining his Chapel Hill band of brothers and sisters, collecting donations for families of the New York firefighters missing in the World Trade Center collapse. Chapel Hill firefighters raised more than $32,000 Monday and Tuesday. Greeson says firefighters hope to raise millions nationally. It's going to go to a good cause. It's going to go to a good cause because there are a lot of families out there who, who uh, you know, are or without fathers or mothers because they, they died trying to rescue people. If you'd like to donate to the Firefighters Fund, mail or drop-off donations at the Chapel Hill Fire Department headquarters, you can mail it to 302 North Columbia Street, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, 27516. Make checks payable to NY Firefighters 9-11 Fund. This past weekend, many events were canceled, including the Carolina football game. But some activities across the campus went on as scheduled. As, a, as Carolina Week's Adure Achumba tells us, students and residents turned a sad weekend into a celebration of life. Flags adorned the streets like a summer 4th of July without fireworks. The mood at the annual festival of India and the Black Students Movement Coronation Ball, usually a festive one, changed to a celebration of life, remembering those who died. Hillsborough's Atara Crary is a member of the Hare Krishna Movement. Due to the events of the last week, we felt it was inappropriate to have a, a very joyous celebration, so we decided that we should change it to a memorial type mood in, in honor of the victims. The Hare Krishnas hosted a free fist with Hindi music and cuisine. The mood at this year's Coronation Ball may not be the same, but students feel the need to celebrate and get on with their lives. Outgoing Mr. BSM, Brandon Lofton, is a graduate student at New York University's law school. He took a train to attend the ball. A week ago, he was at Ground Zero. I'm really glad to be here and be able to get away from New York a little while and being able to participate in life going on a little bit. And But just as long as we, as when life does go on, we remember those who aren't here with us. The new Mr. and Ms. BSM are glad the event wasn't postponed. If you cease everything that you're doing right. because of what happened, it makes it seem as if the terrorists have won. And we're so defeated, so. right. So we win when we can continue to go on and act as if everything's kind of normal. Not entirely normal. That will take more time. In Chapel Hill, I'm Aduria Chumba, Carolina Week. Cherry and Newman will represent the BSM in the race for Mr. and Miss UNC. The winners will be announced at the homecoming football game against Wake Forest in November. When basketball season arrives, the most hated word on the UNC Chapel Hill campus is Duke. But this year, 15 Carolina students may be cheering for our rival. That's because they go to Duke also. They're in the first class of Robertson Scholars, 30 students in all, each carrying two IDs. One's Duke Blue, the other is Carolina Blue. I really feel privileged and blessed to be able to call myself a UNC student and a Duke student. There's only 15 of us on this Duke campus that walk around with two identification cards, one for UNC and one for Duke. And it's really just the greatest opportunity to have the best of both worlds. I think that, although I do consider myself primarily a Carolina student, um, 
it's, it's not difficult to be involved in both universities and take classes at both universities. It takes a little work, but uh, I, I consider myself a piece of both campuses. Robertson scholars are transported back and forth to the two campuses by a newly created bus system. The service is also open to other students who show a valid student ID from either school. The Robertson Scholars Program was funded by a $24 million gift from Julianne and Josie Robertson, who had two sons, one who went to Duke and one who went to Carolina. In our Speak Out segment, we asked students if they felt the Robertson Scholarship would diminish the Carolina-Duke rivalry. I mean, I think it's just for the people, you know, who really want to get uh, just a better education, a wider education. I mean, I, I think it's, even though they go over there, I think people still wear like North Carolina jerseys over there just to make Duke people feel mad. Um, it doesn't affect our personal relationship, but certainly there's some tension or hostility when you get in a group of Carolina students and maybe a group of Duke students um, is around. Like I don't really know anybody personally that goes to Duke, but you know, you, you know if you just hear they're from Duke, you're like, you just, you don't like them. No, 30 students aren't going to make a difference between in a, a huge, like the biggest rivalry in the country between right. two schools. But I think it's good they're doing this program to give these students the opportunity, but I don't think it's going to help with the rivalry at all. Our sample isn't scientific and shouldn't be taken as a reflection of widespread opinion on campus. The UNC 2001 freshman class has the highest combined minority presence ever, 21%. That landmark represents the joint effort between the admissions office and the Office of Minority Affairs to recruit minority students. UNC Chapel Hill's admission office practices affirmative action and are dedicated to creating a diverse student body. But they say they don't give prefer preferential treatment to minority applicants. That's not the case at the University of Georgia, where minority students are given bonus points in the admissions process. But a recent U.S. Supreme Court declared that policy unconstitutional. Though Carolina doesn't assign any numerical value to race, it is a factor in the decisions process. But Director of Admissions Jerry Lucido says that when it comes to admissions, everyone is equal. I want to make a statement here that's really important. There's no back door to Carolina. Everyone comes in the front door. The students here are enormously well qualified. So what we have the luxury of doing at Carolina is choosing from among uh, a, an applicant pool um, that is well qualified for admissions. Carolina gets about 17,000 applicants each year, about 3,500 of whom are admitted to the university. Well, it's been a lot cooler all last week. I know it hasn't been too hot. There's barely been a cloud in the sky. But, Kelly, the question is, will it last? Oh, well, luckily, only a scattered shower here or there threaten this beautiful pattern we're in. We'll get back to the weekend forecast in just a second. But first, I want to go to this week's weather question. And that is, officially, what determines the strength of a hurricane? Your choices are wind speed, structural damage, the diameter, or a barometric pressure. I'll have your answer to the weather question and your weekend forecast just after the break. shop in Orange County, your money comes back to you. Thank you for shopping Orange. So shop Orange and see what a difference you can make. Hi, and welcome back to Carolina Week. Well, blue skies and dry weather have got students walking around campus very comfortably. They are walking from class to class, jacketless, umbrellaless, and that certainly makes it a good time to be outside. Uh, now, let's see, this is beautiful weather, but how does it compare to the averages um, in Chapel Hill for this time of the year? Well, if we take a look at what the normals are in Chapel Hill for this week, over the past 100 years or so, we've tended to see a normal high at about 79 degrees an average low sits at about 55 and typically we see about nine tenths of to an inch of rain over this week. Now this week we'll actually find out that we'll be sitting a bit higher and for our highs and we won't be seeing the precipitation that we normally might so that's always good news. But first let's take a look at the tropics map and see what's going on um, on a satellite picture. You can see uh, a cold front which is going to move through the area uh, Thursday night into Friday but the good news it'll, is, is that well, it will clear out for the weekend. You can see a disturbance sitting down 
off the coast of Florida and the Caribbean, and you can see Tropical Storm Gabrielle starting to die off uh, to the northeast. So right now, the <coughs> tropics are pretty calm, especially for this time of the year, so close to the peak of hurricane season. All right, well, let's switch over to the surface map right now and see what's going on for our forecast. You can see high pressure sitting out here behind the cold front, which will be sweeping through the region uh, for the remainder of this week. Now, what does this high pressure region mean for our uh, weekend forecast? Well, the Carolina Week four-day forecast has a high of 84 on Friday, just the slightest chance of a shower towards the morning. Saturday and Sunday look beautiful. Highs in the 80s and through Monday lows should be in the low 60s to mid 50s. Very nice for this time of the year. Um, if you're planning on spending the first weekend of autumn out at the beach, uh, fall begins on Saturday and we have a high of 82 on Saturday, 84 on Sunday and lows in comfortable mid 60s. Now if the, your weekend plans take you out to the mountains, things look nice there as well. You can expect a high uh, in the upper 70s for Saturday and Sunday. Um, not too much of a chance of showers and lows in the mid 50s. So it'll be beautiful basically no matter where you plan to go this weekend. So did you get a chance to think about the weather question? I thought about yeah. it a little bit. What do you think uh, it is? Uh, I'm going to say wind speed. I was going to say wind speed as well. Yeah, everyone wants to say wind speed, but I guess it's kind of a trick question. The answer is actually barometric pressure. You uh, tend to actually gauge wind speeds by pressure, and so when it comes down to it, you actually look at pressure to determine the strength of a hurricane. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah, no problem. A lot of respect for last week's events, the sports world has taken a pause. And I know that a lot of Carolina's games were affected. Well, that's right. The Tar Heels returned to action on Sunday, but there were some games that were missed. We'll have the latest about when those games will be played. But first, men's and women's golf return to the links on Sunday, both earning fifth place finishes. The volleyball team also shut out ECU on Tuesday. Change the world. You don't have to be rich. Yep. Or famous, but that was or play ball, or lead country. Yep. All you have to do is tell your family you want to be. That's what I had it before when I tested it, though. Talk to your family about organ donation. Talk to your family about donating life. in this house. You have family. Bam, 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 bam. Where are your kids? Sure. Jane, shouldn't you be in that kitchen cooking my dinner right now? Because that's your job. Who? This woman. Welcome back to Carolina Week Sports. In the wake of the horrible events on September 11th, sports rightfully took its place on the back burner of Americans' minds. Following suit, the ACC canceled all athletics through Saturday. The UNC football team was set for its home opener against Southern Methodist University. Instead, the Tar Heels will add a week to their season and host SMU December 1st. The women's soccer ACC opener scheduled for September 12th was canceled and rescheduled for October 18th. And the team did not make the trip to, Houston, to the Houston Challenge Cup over the weekend. Tournaments hosted by the Tar Heels men's soccer and women's volleyball teams were canceled, but both teams played on Sunday. Highlights from those games are coming up. The top-ranked field hockey team also had a weekend off after games versus Old Dominion and Virginia were canceled. Like all Americans, college athletes and coaches will have to deal with the tragedy of September 11th. Some UNC Chapel Hill coaches and athletes feel getting back to the field can help them and everyone else move on. I think this week it'll be something that that'll kind of take our minds off of it and uh, somewhere we can focus that energy and, and that frustration and, and be able to go out there and, and bang around a little bit. I mean, it takes your mind off of it because me being from New York, I mean, I, I knew a lot of people in the World Trade Center such as that, so I mean, it just takes your mind off of it, gives you something positive to look forward to every day. I still can't, uh, you know, put aside my feelings of, of, uh, of anger, my feelings of uh, absolute sadness. Uh, for what's taking place and, and, and a little bit of fear about what's, what's, what's happening right now. But we as Americans, uh, we've faced fear before and we're going to look it right in the eye and, 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 and go for it. Prior to Sunday, the UNC men's soccer team hadn't played in a week. That's when the team suffered its first defeat of the year against St. Louis. 
The team tried to rebound from that loss and the trying week at hand at Fetzer Field against UNC Greensboro. In one of the first athletic events to take place at UNC since Tuesday's attack, Carolina was excited to return to the pitch. Clad with red, white, and blue armbands, the heels started strong. Sophomore forward Sean McGinty scores two goals in the first 20 minutes to put Carolina up 2-0. Greensboro scores at the end of the first half, but the heels' defense shuts out the Spartans in the second half, earning a 2-1 victory. The Tar Heels begin their defense of the ACC title on Saturday when they open their conference schedule in Charlottesville, Virginia against the six-ranked Cavaliers. Also on Sunday, the ladies' volleyball team took to the court. Fans young and old came out to watch the team take on William & Mary. The heels fell behind early, but soon pulled back with authority. Junior Laura Green helped lead the way with 14 kills and 16 digs. The Tribe rallied late, but sophomore Nicole Reese would slam the door on the comeback as the heels go on to win three games to one. The team's record is now 6-3. With the cancellation of last Saturday's game against SMU, the Carolina football team must ju jump right into tough competition again, facing number six Florida State on Saturday. The game will have a very special meaning for head coach John Bunting. There is no doubt when I walk out for Keenan on Keenan Stadium for my first home game, uh, I'm going to be very emotional. Uh, 30 years ago, I, I was able to walk out there and play as a player, and now for the first time, go out as, as the head coach of this, this great university that I love. The students can get tickets for that game Thursday and Friday from 8 to 5 at the Dean Smith Ticket Office at the Smith Center. Thanks, Ben. Well, <clears throat> well coming, up on, coming up on Carolina Week, we're all dealing with last week's tragic events in our own way. Some Carborough residents are creating a moving tribute to America's rescue workers, Sand Style. We'll have it for you when Carolina Week continues. There is a better way to have fun with history. Visit americaslibrary.gov. Log on, play around, learn something. Four Carborough artists are molding a memorial. They're taking 16 tons of sand and sculpting it into a tribute worth its weight in gold. The sculpture is dedicated to the New York and Washington, D.C. firefighters, police officers, and all the other rescue workers who rushed to help after last week's terrorist attacks. The sculpture shows an American flag and the Statue of Liberty and rescuers all working to hold up Lady Liberty's torch. The artists have been working on the sculpture at Carborough's Weaver Street Market since Friday, and one of them says it's had a big effect on the community. They're crying. They come up here and break down in tears. This kind of is a more local, and it gives them a place to come and release this sadness that they don't know where to do it. You know, so it, it's working as a memorial for that, that reason. Hermanson says the sculpture will stand for at least a couple of months. Wow, that was a really great tribute. Yeah, 16 tons of sand. I can't believe that. that. It's That's really wonderful. beautiful, though. It's great. Get over it. See you. <laughs> I'll do that. That does it for this edition of Carolina Week. Thank you for joining us, and be sure to watch next week. Until then, have a good night and a good week. If you have a story idea, contact Carolina Week at 843-8292. You can also visit us online at ibiblio.org slash cw. If you have questions about this program, write Carolina Week at Campus Box 3365, UNCCH, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, 27599.